What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of September in 2019. So if you enjoy this video, if you find this video valuable, which I'm sure you will, go down below and smash that like like button and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me content about the stock market investing trading that's what I focus on here on this channel so without further ado guys let's get right into it let's talk about what happened today in the overall markets and honestly at the close of the markets we were pretty much flat right the S&P 500 was up two dollars and 71 cents at the close here up not even 0.1 percent up 0.09 percent so very slight green day there nothing much at all in terms of the S&P the Nasdaq was up two dollars and 25 cents up 0.03 percent so that's really nothing at all from the Nasdaq either and the Dow Jones industrial average up 69 dollars at the close up 0.25 percent so a decent move there but still nonetheless is really nothing crazy um, in terms of today's performance and it makes sense because yesterday if you guys were paying attention the overall markets did amazing we look at the S&P very quickly on the five day five minute or no, it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before, right? We gapped up. Oh, no, no. It was yesterday. We gapped up, right? Very strong green day. We kind of stayed flat. And today was a lot of the same. We stayed flat, right? So at this point, on this five day, five minute, we might as well start breaking technicals now. On this five day, five minute, for the S&P to continue this run, for you know the 500 largest publicly, comp uh, publicly traded companies to keep pushing up here, we need to see a pop and a bounce on this 180S SMA on this five minute chart, right? This five day, five minute. And if we scale out to the 20 day, one hour, we can see, okay, we're a bit overextended here. We may be pulling down to retest 2950. Or if we don't do that, we may just pop and try to test $3,000 right off the bat from here. So it's kind of in a tricky spot, right? It's pretty overbought on a lot of these time frames. And if we go out to the 184 hour, it does seem like we could could potentially pull down to 2950 that's not out of the cards right now if, if we were to do that that would just be a retracement in this uptrend that we've been seeing over the past couple of days here so that would put it down about 0.65 maybe nearly one percent down if it did pull back to 2950 and from there you know if we held that popped a bit we can maybe continue the uptrend or if we broke that we may be going down even further to test maybe 2930 so right now, guys, the technicals are telling me um, overall the S&P 500 is a bit overbought. Again, on the 20-day, one hour, we're overextended. I wouldn't be shocked if we went down. But then on the five-day, five-minute, we're already at that support. So if we were to break that level, maybe go down, really, if we were to break this level, this would be a clear sign, in my opinion, that we are going down to 2950. So I'd say watch the smaller time frames here and then uh, start to drag it out to the 20-day chart, the 184 hour chart and uh, you'll be able to see your analysis a bit easier you know if we were to break this and if we started to head down to 2950 so that's what the s p is looking like right now the nasdaq if we look at it a bit here we're already breaking that level of support on this five day five minute being the 180 sma this yellow line as well as that 50 sma if we're dragging out a bit it seems like the nasdaq is at a resistance right now let me go to the 184 hour to confirm that very quickly yes we're at a resistance so this is not too good of a sign here for the nasdaq this is a level that we actually topped out at before that big may 2019 sell-off in the markets you can see here 78.75 we hit that then we sold off all the way down to about seven thousand dollars flat a little bit under that right and now we're at that same level that we were at before we dumped in may so this is a very strong level of resistance guys it seems like it's it's struggling to get above it right now. 
So if we do get that drastic pullback, let's say the futures push red on Sunday, which they open up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard, by the way, you know, if we're gapping down during that time period, we may be going back down to test 7750, which is about 100 points lower from where we are right now. And this could be a point where we either hold and maybe continue the uptrend or we could break that and maybe start to retest this trend line again or maybe this 50 SMA or the 180. SMA. So that's kind of what I'm watching here on the NASDAQ. We are seeing a bit of resistance. Um, just keep an eye on what it does at that level that I just mentioned. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, guys, it seems like on this smaller time frame chart, it's breaking above a resistance. So let's drag out a bit and see what level that's at. This is the level that we were at before the May sell-off on the Dow Jones. We were at about 26650 roughly, right? We, we hit that level, then we sold off drastically. We popped, hit the all-time high, making that a support again. We sold off in August, right? We sold off in the bloody August month that we had for the most part, and now we popped up and we broke the resistance, and it seems like we're holding it as a new support again right now. And let me show you guys how it actually confirmed the pop on that new support. You can see it here. We gapped up above it yesterday. We pulled down either pre-market hours or rather pre-market hours today or after market hours yesterday. I'm thinking it was after market hours into pre-market today. We ended up popping and confirming that support as we held and popped above it this morning. So that's a pretty good sign and especially since we pushed to a high here at about 26,860. That's a good sign that the Dow is holding this level and trying to continue the uptrend and push higher to maybe even test the 27,000 dollar range. So good signs from the Dow Jones here, guys. If we were to, let's say, gap down hypothetically here and maybe break below 26,600, what I'd be watching there would be 26,400. That would be the next level of support. So overall, the markets are looking good. The Dow in specific um, is looking very good for potential high, higher highs here. Um, the S&P is looking good as well because we are holding an old resistance as a new support on the S&P. But the NASDAQ is struggling here um, under the resistance from back in uh, the beginning of May towards the end of August or rather April. So we'd need to see a pop above that for this to potentially test all time highs again. So that's what the overall markets are looking like through my perspective, through my lens right now. Um, let me know down below. What are your thoughts on the market? I'd love to know. And again, you all know that I love talking to you in the comments. So don't be shy. Drop a comment and let's talk about about um, what's going on here. So let's go to the trading portion of today's video, guys. I traded UGAS, ticker symbol UGAZ. This is one that we've been talking about a lot on this channel, and it goes up whenever natural gas is going up. That is how it trades, right? It's a 3x leveraged ETN, so that means whenever natural gas, the, the asset that it uh, uh, tracks, right? Whenever natural gas moves up, let's say 1%, UGAS is going to be up 3% because it's 3x leveraged. And if it's if natural gas goes 2%, UGAS will be up roughly 6%, right? That's kind of how it works. And you can see here... That that we had about a 6% day today, and we hit highs at about 1920. And what we talked about in yesterday's video ended up playing out today, guys. And what was that? Well, in yesterday's video, I talked about this 1830 level of resistance and this 50 SMA here on this hourly chart, right? So I was talking about how I want to see a potential retest and then a pop and ultimately a break above 1830. That would be the bullish move we need to see to fill the gap up to the next resistance, which in this case, as you guys can clearly see, is $20, which is why in yesterday's video, I titled it, you guys going to $20 question mark, because that's the range that we're in right now between $18.30 and about $20. And since natural gas ended up playing out perfectly again, right, we've been playing this one very well. 
We pulled down, hit 50 SMA, hit 240 and popped, and now we filled the gap up to 250 like we talked about and like we were analyzing in the past couple of videos. That's what ended up pumping up you guys, and that's what ended up uh, really causing the bullish run that we saw today. So the fact that we popped above 248, 250 now, it seems like we're pulling back to potentially hold this as a new support. I'm still seeing you guys and natural gas in general, technically speaking here, being extremely extremely bullish going forward as of right now, right? And the next level that natural gas could fill up to if we go to the, let's say the 90 day, uh, two hour chart, you can see if we hold this successfully into the uh, 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 Sunday future session, maybe into Monday as well, the next spot we can go to is around $2.55. And if we complete that gap up to 255, who knows, right? If that does end up happening, you guys should definitely be well above $20 at that point, right? And once you guys breaks 20, if it does, we might be going to $23, right? Which would be the next support or uh, uh, resistance that I'm seeing. So we fill up the 20, maybe pop up a bit, pull back, hold 20, and then maybe we fill the gap up. That's kind of how this works. The whole entire uh, idea is trading in between these little, uh, uh, what, what are they called? These little channels, right? That's kind of how I've been trading you guys and natural gas here over these past couple of days. And it's just been extremely, extremely bullish. So that's what I ended up doing. Actually, I didn't even tell you guys what I ended up doing. I kind of just broke down the ETN, but let me tell you guys exactly what I ended up doing. I almost got a bit too sidetracked there. So I got into you guys today a bit late. I didn't get in on the break of 1830 like originally planned. I ended up getting in on, I believe it was this pullback or no, it was actually down here at about 1865 before we ended up popping and then holding this, right? So this is when I ended up getting in 1865. We started to pull back and this was kind of looking like a bull flag, but I noticed that actually after I ended up getting out of the uh, out of the trade. So I kind of messed up there a little bit. But as I got into 1865, we popped up to about, I think I sold at like 1879 because I locked in about 0.9% profit. Let me, let me show you guys the math here. Yeah, you can see 1870 or rather from 1865 to about 1880 is where I ended up um, closing out the position. And literally guys, that bull flag ended up playing out. We ended up popping and then uh, running to 1930. So in, in theory, and um, looking back, I kind of sold a bit too early. I left like two, 3% on the table at least, but that's okay because I locked in the profits. That's what's important here. I'm not looking to hit home run trades every single day. The idea is to keep the wins small and try to keep them, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the word, um, consistent, right? That's the whole entire um, idea of what I'm going for here. So that's what I ended up doing today, and uh, that's really just the breakdown of you guys that I'm looking for uh, to potentially play out over these next couple of days. So that's really the main one that I'm watching for this upcoming week. Another one that I'm watching is going to be JNUG. JNUG got hit quite hard today. We broke major support levels being the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA. We're at $75 per share now, down about 8% on the day. But Guys, once these markets um, kind of settle down, maybe we see a bit of a pullback in these markets and gold starts to shoot back up. JNUG has a lot of margin here. Just be careful because it is now breaking under, again, like I said, these moving averages, so don't get caught in a falling knife, but if the markets start to sell off a bit, if the markets cool off a bit, you know, this can do very well, because if we look back on gold really quickly, gold is on the 180 SMA support right now on this four-hour chart, which has been a support over the past couple of months for gold. So this can definitely hold. And if it pops here, GDX should do well from there, which is what JNUG trades based upon. And just take a look. GDX is holding that 180 SMA on the four hour chart as well. So if we pop here and end up testing these highs at about $30, look how much margin of profit that is. That's about 7% on GDX. And since JNUG is a 3X leveraged ETF, that's about a 21% move at least that JNUG has in store if GDX 
pops above that moving average and potentially tests those highs again. So we can see it for ourselves from 71 or 75 back up to those highs at about 100 bucks. That's at least 23 to 25% that is offered here from JNUG, which is pretty, pretty good in my opinion. But we have to see the markets cool off a bit. We have to see um, gold start to spike. And this is going to be a huge mover, um, in my opinion. Maybe even this upcoming week, honestly, maybe even. Even this upcoming week, we could get a gap up to the 90s again. I think it's possible. So, JNUG, I'm watching that one very closely. Um, some stocks today, you know, tech stocks, Microsoft was red. Google was red. Facebook was red about $3. Amazon, $7. And Apple, two cents down. So, overall, Facebook was probably um, the biggest mover to the red today. And overall, Facebook right now, I think it could be a bullish breakout play if we break out of this 180 SMA resistance and ultimately break into the 190s and successfully hold this level uh, as a support, right? If we hold 190, we could potentially start to retest the 200s again and uh, really start trending up in this next channel that Facebook could be in again if it breaks and holds that level at 190. So Facebook, I'm watching that one for sure right now. At V, let's take a look at At V very quickly because this one's been very bullish, guys. Very bullish. I talked about this about a week ago. About a week ago in the video. I know you guys know that quote. And I was talking about At V because it was trending at about $51. And we've been really just following these channels because Advi and video games in general, the stocks, they've been getting slaughtered, right? So they have a lot of margin of profit. And it seems like this is a temporary bottom for Advi. So it's worth watching because there's a lot of money to be made if we start to move back up. So we traded it. Um, I believe I, sw I swing traded it about two weeks ago in this range right here. We broke out of 51. It seems like we held it. And now we filled all the way up to the next range, which is at about 55 to 56 dollars so this is very interesting because if we end up pulling back here which i think is already happening or rather we're consolidating but if we pull back maybe retest 52 53 find a support there this can be a good trade back up to about 55 56 dollars and if we pop 56, above 56, hold that level as a new support, we could be flooding back up to maybe the, the low 60s. Let me just take a look and see um, what would be the next support. Yeah, literally the low 60s, right? That would be the next zone um, gap that we could potentially fill up to about $62. So at me, I'm definitely watching that one. Um, Facebook, JNUG, and UGAS. So that's it for this video, guys. Those are four stocks. I don't want this video to be too long because typically on Fridays, guys, people zone out after work, after the long day, after the long stressful week, and they don't want to be sitting here probably for 30 minutes watching this video, but I'm sure a lot of you guys would if I did make it, and I really appreciate you guys, but uh, the majority of people probably wouldn't sit too long on this video. So if you guys want me to talk about any specific stocks, go down below in the comments, comment that ticker down below, and I'll get to it in Sunday's video. If you you found value in this video feel free to hit that like button and consider subscribing i appreciate all of you guys watching it means a lot to me that you're taking out your time in your day to watch these videos i hope you guys did well this week i'll catch you all in the next video have a great weekend peace out what's going on everybody